So while I have the uh, 30 foot hulls out for the new solar electric catamaran build, uh, had to mow underneath them like I have to do with all my boats <laughs> occasionally. We finally got some rain. Anyways, uh, while I had it out here, I thought I'd give an update on some things I've been working on um, since I'm actually still in the planning and design phase of this project. Usually I just post videos uh, after something's already built and I'm enjoying and using it. So anyways, um, it's not uh, romantic or the fun part of the build necessarily, but I always like to start with the foundation. And um, the foundation on something like this is, is the trailer. And um, for me, I like to be able to launch and retrieve uh, my boats um, single hand. And um, I like the boats to tow well um, down the road. And, um, and so for me with multi hulls, the way to do that is to have a, a trailer that, that has uh, low cross supports with um, bunk rollers instead of uh, you know wooden bunks or in this case this boat has uh, cradles and um, not only does that make it easy to retrieve the boat um, you know from our shallow uh, launch ramps because most of the ramps that I use aren't really ramps um, the one I use the most is a river and uh, the tide is constantly fluctuating and you never know what you're gonna get. So it's important to have um, a boat that sits low on the trailer, especially if there's little volume um, at the stern because um, it won't float off the trailer easily and it won't float back on. So the thing about the trailer for this particular set of hulls is uh, it, it's built out of aluminum and it's definitely you know I would say uh, homemade <laughs> and uh, you know for the most part it, it did the job um, I think it partly relied on the cross beam structure tubes of the boat um, to sort of tie everything together once it's strapped down because without the tubes in it it's it's somewhat flimsy um, it also used um, a sliding cradle support system. As you can see, basically, these short beams sit on top of a cross beam full width with cradles. And the idea was that you could, you know, remove these cross tubes, push the hulls together to be um, under the max towing width. And then when you got to the ramp, you would uh, spread the hulls apart, drop the beams in, and, and bolt it all together. But that's too much work for me. So the first thing I, I had to do on this boat was decide just how wide I wanted it on the trailer. Um, you know, we've got pretty narrow roads around here. I don't have to drive far. I don't have to drive fast but we've got one-way bridges that we have to uh, turn, um, uh, navigate through basically, you know, entering and exiting. And uh, we also have a lot of uh, encroaching, um, you know, trees and shrubbery that grows alongside um, the roads, you know, very quickly and sort of flops over when we have a lot of rain. So. Um, all those things, you know, I had to take those things into consideration. Um, and so what I've decided is, is this is the max width the boat's going to be on trailer, um, which is about nine foot six. And I've decided that the easiest way to get the boat lower on the trailer, not only to make launching and retrieving easier, because it's, they're quite high right now, the hulls. Um, but also to lower the center of gravity to make uh, towing better is going to be to do a few things. Um, to start, I'll be eliminating these cradles, which are very 
tall as you can see and um, I'll be removing the cross beams here this is a full width cross beam that runs all the way across and then you can see the cradles use a fiberglass I-beam with a wooden cradle to hug the hulls and um, this is about a five inch I-beam here and this is like a six inch so right there you, you got a lot of height that you could reduce um, the problem here is in order for this uh, long trailer to be strong uh, they've added another u-channel stacked on top of this u-channel on the bottom that the axles are bolted to as a strong back to keep the uh, the frame from bowing and my plan is going to be to remove that stacked U-channel. And instead what I'm gonna do is take this U-channel off of here and I'm actually gonna back bolt it to the main U-channel, which is open on the inside, and basically create a I-beam. So the two U-channels will be bolted um, back to back to create an I-beam and there's just enough space between uh, the inside of the tire and wheel there to get that on there. That'll basically drop uh, my, my ground floor, so to speak, to just the top of this main five inch U-channel. Uh, and that should provide um, the support I need um, you know, instead of being a strong back, it's kind of like lapping um, two two by fours together, which you know are stronger than say a, a single four by four. Um, once I do that, the plan is instead of having these, you know, funky cradles where the boat hulls are only being supported at the front and rear, which actually is sort of stressing the trailer because you've got the two torsion axles here and you can see you've got a cradle here and then you got 13 feet of boat and that's a lot of pressure to have here and here and so that's why that strong back was added was to keep it from bowing like this and of course since it's an aluminum trailer it's it's gonna flex anyways so the plan instead will be to remove those cradles once this u-channel is moved to the outside here and that'll drop us down to here and then what I'll do is I'll use one of my favorite building materials because they're available they're cheap and they are infinitely adjustable and that is is a, a galvanized two by two street post sign and uh, basically I use these on all my little trailers I undersling them and then I use your standard uh, roller brackets and you can position the width, you can change it. I've had one trailer that worked for multiple boats just by reconfiguring the rollers. Anyways, what I'll end up doing is putting about six of these along that U-channel. And that'll spread the load so that it's actually resting across the whole length of the frame instead of just at the front and the back and that in combination with getting a new set of wheels and tires um, which are commonly known as sort of like a pontoon boat trailer wheels um, these right here are 14s they measure about 25 inches tall if I put a set of pontoon tires on there um, and wheels I can basically save myself about five inches because they're, they're 20 inches in diameter overall versus the 25. And like I said, um, there's only one or two spots where we drive 50 on this island. I don't need uh, the super high load rated tall tires for driving around here. Um, plus, after doing the calculations, um, the uh, pontoon tire and wheels 
perfectly fine for how light this boat's going to be once it's done and built. So not only will that reduce the overall height um, of the hulls on the trailer to make launching easier, but um, it'll also uh, lower the center of gravity and uh, will make it so that it tows a lot better. And then what I'll do is I'll take, these are brand new uh, Towmaster green ball tires um, on all four sides there, all four corners. I'm actually gonna take these wheels off of here and uh, I'll swap them over here to my Trimaran's trailer, um, which has nice tires on it, but they're a little older. Um, and then I'll just keep these as spares. But um, that's the plan for the trailer. Like I said, it's it's not, you know, the fun part of the build, but it's one of the most important aspects um, because if you do it right, it just makes using the boat that much easier. And, um, you know, nobody likes to fuss around at the boat ramp and have to goof around with a bunch of stuff. And, and also, I'll just mention really quickly that what's going to happen with this design is uh, I have... Uh, created a basically a beam design and a superstructure that's going to allow this boat to go from the width that you see it now which is about nine and a half feet wide max with about four feet in between the two hulls uh, with a push of a button on the water it's going to expand out an additional 30 inches on either side so um, it's going to be basically you know close to about 14 feet overall width on the water and uh, you'll use linear actuators um, and a push button uh, remote to basically go from narrow to wide that way you know you can launch the boat on a narrow boat ramp and or navigate um, narrow rivers and then you know when you want the extra room when you're on the water and a little extra stability um, you'll be able to um, push a button and the boat will basically expand on the water and i'll go into more detail about that design plan that's the that's the fun stuff the trailer not so much but um baby steps and the first step is get this boat trailer set up so that these hulls are sitting as low as possible um, and uh, so that getting the boat back on the trailer pushing the boat off it is as effortless as possible and usually I find with the roller rollers instead of bunks um, even if you're in slightly shallow water um, with a light displacement set of hulls like this all you need is a, is a good winch and you just get the the bows on that first set of rollers and then uh, you just crank away and and usually you can retrieve a boat like this pretty easily uh, by yourself and that's the plan